hey guys welcome back to my channel so today's video we have dr jordan peterson on why women are more promiscuous in today's age okay it's, it's actually a question why are women more promiscuous in today's age let's hear his answer i love listening to this man so let's hear what he's got to say okay so back to freud so that now a lot of what freud saw was sexual pathology now, you might ask yourself, why? Well, the first thing we could point out is that when Freud was alive, society was very highly divided by gender. It was divided by gender roles. And men were authorities, and women were, by and large, subordinate. Although, that situation is more complex than a simple reading of history might lead you to conclude. So, for example, if you read... Tolstoy's novels characterizing Russian society in the late 1900s, you find out that among the aristocratic women, and after all, only the aristocrats have power, there was plenty of power being exercised. The women essentially structured society. Men were involved in politics and they were involved in war, but women were setting up the social interactions that characterized the bulk of, of society in their groups and in their, and in their own interactions. So, it's not clear who was doing what when. What is clear, though, is that in the Victorian times, sex was a lot more dangerous for women than it is now. And it's plenty dangerous now. A, there was no reliable forms of birth control. That's a big problem. And B, there was tremendous risk of syphilis. And syphilis, for all intents and purposes, was as bad, or is, as bad or worse than AIDS. Now, it's controllable now, but it wasn't controllable then. And syphilis could also be passed on to children. And it was a neurological disease that could take virtually any form. So it was a real terror for European society. And so the reason that the, Europe, that the Victorians were sort of repressive in sexual matters was because the environment demanded it. And we know, and more research has been done on this recently, it's fascinating research, we know that as the rate of contagious pathogen in the environment increases, the degree to which a society becomes authoritarian increases, and very rapidly. In fact, there's recent data showing that, there's a paper published just a few months ago showing that the correlation between infectious disease prevalence in a given geographical locale and authoritarian political views held by the individuals in that locale approaches 0.7 which is absolutely phenomenal. It's such a high correlation that it, 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 it almost eats up all of the relationship. And so as the risk of infectious disease rises, people become less and less tolerant in their um, views on interpersonal behavior. And a lot of that's going to be associated with sexual behavior because that's a very good vector for the transmission of disease. We should remember that you know, if we hadn't been so technologically advanced in the 1980s, well, first of all, AIDS wouldn't have spread because it spread because of air travel. But apart from that, you know, AIDS could have taken us all out. It was just luck of the draw and technological power that enabled us to keep it under control. And, you know, there's no reason to assume that another sexually transmissible plague like AIDS won't come along. So, as that pros promiscuity increases, the rate at which sexually transmissible diseases are transmitted rises exponentially, right? And in a connected world, that's bad news. So my point is, the, the Freudians, the Victorians, had their reasons to be relatively repressive from a sexual perspective. Um, there was another problem, too, which for women in particular, which was that, <coughs> apart from the danger of pregnancy, and the danger of sexually transmitted disease, there was also the danger of the destruction of their social reputation. And so if a woman got a reputation for um, promiscuity at any level, the probability that she was going to be tossed out of her sociological niche into some god-awful life of prostitution, for example, was really quite high. So now, so that sets up the sociological what would you call it, the, the sociological surround. You don't repress something unless 
engaging in it has high cost. And certainly for the Victorians, sexual behavior was a high cost enterprise, especially for the women. And so Freud Given Freud's emphasis on biological motivation, and given his belief that sex, sexual th drive was a fundamentally was one of the fundamental biological motivations, you can see that the stage is set for, in some sense, for a developmental conflict. Now, the conflict's already there. When you're a child, say, of 11 or 10, you exist in a world where the demand or even the desire for engaging in sexual behavior is low, but as soon as puberty kicks in, things change dramatically. Then the child is faced with the problem of integrating the new demand that's placed on them by the maturation of their body into their personality and into the social surround, and that's no simple matter when there's genuine conflicts between its expression and other important considerations, like social propriety and health, for example, or maybe medium to long-term relationship stability, or maybe the provision of a safe place to raise children, etc. So that's the situation that the Freudian, or the Victorians found themselves in. Now, one thing I love so much about, about um, Dr. Peterson is how he usually takes his time to think about something before he sees it. I love that for him, and he doesn't rush himself, and he, he's consistent in that manner. There's a comment somebody wrote here that, for me, sums all what he's saying up to me. This person wrote, simple, social media is especially focused on image, which is true. Who loves obsessing over self-image? Mostly women. They see empty women dressing for a second of a man's attention and do the same. The problem is, the problem is with most women. They complain about not finding a respectful guy but post indecent photos, can I say in bracket, and don't conform, don't call me sexist because I'm a woman who has witnessed this from first hand experience. The culture is skewed and society views sex more like a recreational pastime than an intimate thing. If sex wasn't meant to be an in, wasn't meant to be an intimate, valuable thing, then why is grip a crime? That's a food for thought. Mm. I love the way she put it. I love, I love how she put it. Hey, this, is, this is actually so, so, so correct. You no, know, before now, yeah, I used to be of the school of thought that men are easily influenced. I think I was, I didn't understand it because I, I saw the way men love to, you know, imitate their fellow men, which is why I've also come to realize that the the importance of a father in a household, especially a household that has men in it. Of course, we, women also need their fathers. But that was me, I, I, I didn't understand that. That was why I was saying that, oh, men are easily influenced. But that is actually a good thing because I, men love to copy what other men are doing, which, which leads to the fact that it's good for a man to have a good example or have a good influence in his own household. So yeah, back to what I was saying. But I've come to realize due to the the pandemic that social media is, that is actually women that are easily influenced, especially the bad wagons. Men, women love to follow the crowd, what is trending. They love to follow what is trending, which is why we see companies are taking advantages of that. Go on TikTok, you see somebody is you know, advertising this. It's oh, promoting overconsumption because there's a woman, so one particular woman wear this cloth. She also wants to wear the same clothes. You see them doing ungodly things just because they want to have the money to buy what they saw a particular person wear. They are just competing amongst themselves, unhealthy competition. Just hope I was able to even articulate myself the ways in my head. But let me know your thoughts are in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe and take care of yourselves, guys. Bye.